reason right there. Rushing to their servants, turning their heads away, not to see this place of misery. Bethesda in Hebrew and the main language actually means the house of mercy, the house of grace. There was nothing graceful about this place until he showed up. Until he came amongst them. He who's the source of mercy, the source, the spring of life. Until that moment, there was nothing graceful about Bethesda. By the way, this, this uh, spa and pool uh, was a place where Jews would uh, drink their lands to be washed before they would take them through a sheep's gate to the temple to be offered as a sacrifice. This gate exists to this day, sheep's gate. Now uh, it's called also the lion's gate or the St. Stephen's gate. And it's called the Lion's Gate, just a, a, a short uh, historical reference. Uh, we all know who Salaman Nefes was. His father was Salaman I. And uh, when Salaman conquered Jerusalem and took Jerusalem into his hands, he wanted to level it. There's a story that he uh, was standing one on one on top of one of the hills in Jerusalem, looking at Jerusalem, and it's a sultan uh, now belonging to him, and he expressed his desire to level it, to drown it, to erase it. That's how much he made it. That was his decision. However, <coughs> he was sleeping next night. He drank of this big lion's Devouring him, eating him, and, uh, and he was told in the dream, unless you preserve Jerusalem, you will be eaten by these lions. And he was very much afraid by this vision. So when he uh, woke up, he ordered Jerusalem to be left intact. And this gate, uh, that he had in small lion statues on top. It's very close to the test of Solomon's temple, to the place. It, it belongs to the Muslim quarter. Jerusalem is the, the old city is divided into four quarters, and this place is actually in the, inside the Muslims. So, my brothers and sisters, going back to what I said, this is yours and my spiritual spot. This is the place where we receive blessings, healings. When we were baptized, Priest blesses the water and he invites the descent, the Holy Spirit to descend and to hallow it, to make it a fountain of incorruption, a gift of sanctification, a lever of regeneration. This is what church is for you and me. However, us being brothers and sisters, it is very important that we need to. Hear me, each other. Lift up each other. Not push down each other. Not go by without noticing each other. Not having empathy, but a true empathy. A Christian empathy that calls for action. Not just saying, oh, I'm sorry for your life circumstances. A Christian empathy is always proactive. A true philanthropy. Not just to talk about God, but to, to talk about saints, our glorious history, how our ancestors lived like the food that we belong to them. This is what today's gospel lesson calls us to do. And may God help us to the intercessory prayers of our forefathers and foremothers who lived in this who manifested this kind of faith, this kind of perseverance that this man had for 38 years, he did not give up. Yet we give up so easily. We come to church once and uh, uh, offer our prayers to God and we expect, expect God to respond right away. This man teaches us 
perseverance for 38 years. And another thing, you know, look at this, very important. And he was made whole and healed. The first thing, his healthy legs and feet took him to was not a uh, cafana or a uh, restaurant or who knows, who knows how many people he wanted to see, who knows how many people he wanted to share his joy that he's now healthy that he can walk. The first place he went to was the temple of God. The gospel tells him the Lord saw him after this in the temple giving glory to God. The Epics. The Epics was we are healthy. Yet we forget to go and give, give thanks to God. So may God grant us friends to, to imitate our uh, Bobby and Dede. Uh, to imitate them in poverty, wars, exiles. They kept their faith. They persevered. In their struggles, in their journey, they never gave, gave up on their lands, on their freedom, on their faith, on their churches, never gave up. 500 years. They are likened to this man. He suffered for 38 years. He suffered under the Ottoman Empire for 500 years, yet we did not give up. Who are we to give up nowadays on our faith because of the leisures of this life? Comforts of this life. Think about it. And uh, since I am saying that this is our house, indeed this is our house, belongs to you, belongs to me, belongs to our holy church. By the way, pray for our bishops for gathering country, beginning their assembly today and tomorrow, today, and in the liturgy of tomorrow, again, the liturgy will have a liturgy again tomorrow at 9 30, celebrating our. Uh, Enlighteners, enlighteners, and so Slav people, Slav people, St. Cyril and Antonius, and they're beginning their, uh, their assembly in Belgrade to be God's enlightenment with His divine Holy Spirit and strength and wisdom and strength to persevere. Because it is not easy. To carry this great task and ministry of being the leaders of our holy mother church. And uh, I, on, on behalf of my family, uh, thank you for coming today. Many of you know that uh, yesterday we celebrated St. Nicholas, the one who wrote in my life. Indeed, a great saint. We have no certain snowbooks left behind. We have yet. Well, the whole world is not so much because of his deeds. Uh, they can never disappear. And uh, so we still really have St. Nicholas transfer of his relics from Asia, from my world to Dubai, Italy, thousand years ago. This happened and we still celebrate it and remember it. Many miracles that happened. Thank you for coming to share the joy of celebrating our Slava, our patron saint St. Nicholas, and I, I, I invite you all to stay as being part of the church. Then we call you on Slavsky uh, Kolaj, so please partake, and then we stay at the Predillo of Advisors until I can finish my prayers here. And uh, so you can bless the lunch. Please help yourself uh, with appetizers, but most importantly, we call you. That's a symbol of my eternal strive and hope for me. God bless you all and thank you, your our friends and family and brothers and sisters. Indeed, this is how I see you. Indeed. I see you as my family. I have no family in the United States. My whole family is back in Serbia, and of course it's difficult. But I see you as my family, and that's why we should. That's how we should be each other and uh, approach each other as the closest ones in the Lord. This is what today's gospel lesson is. Amen.